Hey everyone! Today I'm going to show you how to make these really cute and simple overalls for a stuffed animal. This was made to fit a Build-A-Bear or any similarly sized stuffed animal. Now let's get started! To make this you're going to need a sewing machine, pins, scissors, fabric, I'm just using plain black but you can even use denim, and some buttons. You also need some patterns and I'll have the ones I made linked in the description box below. The first thing we need to do is cut out our pieces. So I'm going to be using a cutting mat, but you can always just use scissors. And I'm just going to lay my number two pattern on top of my fabric and pin it down. And this piece is for the pants part, so I'm going to be needing two of these. And since I didn't have much fabric to work with, I'm going to cut these two pieces out separately, but usually I just fold the fabric in half and pin the pattern onto both layers, so I can easily just cut both pieces out at once. But this works too, I'm just going to cut them out separately, all on single layers, and I'm doing that to the other pieces as well. And you also want these large pieces to be mirror images of each other, so when you fold it in half, just make sure that they're good side to good side or bad side to bad side when you're cutting them out. The last thing I'm doing is just cutting out my straps. I will also need two of these, and then we can move on to the sewing. After everything's cut out, I'm gonna grab my piece for the top, and what I wanna do is fold over and hem all of the sides except the bottom one, and to make that easier, I'm first gonna make a few cuts right at the corners, just so all the sides can fold over. And now I'm gonna fold over a few millimeters of each edge, and around the curve can be a little tricky, but I'm just going to be using a smaller stitch than usual to help get some neater edges. And so I'm just going to pin this down and continue to do that with the rest, but I'm going to leave the very bottom alone. And I'm going to use a straight stitch to hem this in place. After that, this piece will have nice clean edges and we can set it aside. Now I'm going to grab those two big pieces for the pants, and you can't really tell with my fabric, but I'm going to flip them good side to good side with each other. And I'm going to line up the two smaller curves together and just pin them right there. And then I'm going to do a straight stitch along that curve. After that, I'm going to lay it out flat and grab that piece for the top. And this is with the good side facing up. And now I'm just going to kind of fold this in half to find the midpoint because I want to line this up with the seam we just made. And I'm laying them good side to good side like this and pinning them together. And then I'm just going to do a straight stitch right across this top to connect them. When that's done, you can fold this top up and flip it over. And now I need to hem this top edge that was not connected to the top piece. So I'm folding over this raw edge once and pinning it in place. And you're gonna have to do this on both sides separately. And after everything's pinned down, I'm gonna do a straight stitch across the tops of each side. Now here's where I'd usually sew together the other two curves, but I actually wanna leave a tail hole this time. So I'm gonna have to clean up those raw edges because there's gonna be an opening. So right on this straight part of the curve, which will be open for the tail, I'm gonna do a small zigzag stitch on the edge so it won't fray later on. So after doing that, it actually turned out really messy since I've never really done this before, but I left it on one side and for the other side, I just kind of folded the edge over a tiny bit and that cleans up the edge as well. So I would recommend just hemming that edge a little bit instead of doing the zigzag stitch. So next, I'm just folding in half, good side to good side still, and I'm just going to pin along this curve but while sewing this, I'm gonna make sure to leave a small one inch space towards the top for the tail. After that, I realized I completely forgot to hem the bottom of the pants, which I'd usually do earlier. So right now I'm just folding up the tops like this and you can do this earlier, but right now is fine too. So I'm just gonna fold over the bottoms a little bit and pin it along both sides. And I have mine turned inside out. That's why I'm folding it up like this. After doing a straight stitch to hold that in place, I'm gonna open the pants up and start lining up these inner shorter edges. And this is gonna be the inside of the legs. And I'm just going to pin them in place. And then I'm gonna do a straight stitch right where I pinned to close up the inside of these pants. After that, the main part of the overalls are basically finished so we can set this aside. Now I'm grabbing the piece for the pocket and I'm first folding over this top edge and pinning it in place. Then I'm going to do a straight stitch along the top to hem it. After that, I'm going to grab my main piece and I still have to turn it inside out, so I'm just going to do that now. And now it is time to attach our pocket. So I'm going to lay this perfectly flat and position my pocket right in the center where I want it. And before pinning it in place, I'm going to make sure to fold over that edge before laying it on top. That way when you sew over it, there's a nice clean edge. So I'm just gonna pin this in place. 
And I know it's a little hard to see since I'm using the same black fabric for both, but I just want to continue doing this for the rest of the edges of the pocket except the top. And I also forgot to cut the corners a little bit, so I'm just making tiny cuts in each corner so it's easier to fold over the edges. So now I'm just going to do the same thing for the rest of the pocket. I'm going to be using a straight stitch to sew this on, making sure not to sew down the top edge. After that, you'll have a perfect little pocket you can really put anything in. But right now, I'm going to move on to sewing on the buttons. I'm just using two small silver ones, and I'm going to have them right here at the top. And now I'm just going in with a needle and some black thread. And then I'm just going to sew these on by making kind of an X shape between the four holes. So I'm just going through the back of one hole and then entering in through the hole diagonal to that one. And that will create that diagonal stitch. And then I'm going to repeat that for the other one to create this X shape. And I'm going to repeat that a few times to make sure this button is secure. And after repeating that X shape a few times, I'm just going to lock my stitch right in the back. And now I just need to do the same thing to the other button. After that, we can finally work on our straps. And they're just two very long rectangles. And so I'm just going to fold over the edges of each side. And then I'm going to hem them so they have clean edges. And this can take a little time since they're so long and you have to do both sides. But they turn out looking really good in the end, so it's definitely worth doing. And since it was taking so long for me, for the second strap, I tried inserting the pins vertically to go through both of the folds, but that didn't work out too well, so I wouldn't recommend doing that. And then I'm going to do a straight stitch right where I pinned to hem the sides. After that's done, I'm going to hem the top edge of each strap, and I only have to do one of these because the other end will be attached to the overall pants itself, so you won't see that edge. So I'm just hemming that with a straight stitch. After that, you'll want to grab the ends that you just hemmed, and now I'm going to start marking where I want the buttonholes to be. So I'm just making a short line towards the top with a white crayon so you can easily see it. And you'll want to make your line a little bit longer than the size of the button. Mine was a little too short, so I do longer than mine. And this is only necessary if you're not using a buttonhole foot for your sewing machine. So now I'm just going to sew my buttonhole. After the stitches are already there, we can now cut the buttonhole. So the way I do this is I just kind of fold it in half and then make a cut right in between the stitches. And I think there are other ways to do this, like with a blade or something, but this works for me. Now I can attach the straps onto the overalls using the button. So once I have the other ends of the straps attached, if I want to remove the overalls from the stuffed animal, I would just unbutton the straps and that would make it easier to take it on and off. But right now, I'm just going to try this on my stuffed animal, and that way I know exactly where I'm going to sew the back of the straps on. And so once it's all the way on, I'm going to cross the straps in the back, and you can really put them as far apart as you want, but I'm just going to do it right here a little bit in between the tail and her hip. And once I have them positioned where I want them, I'm just going to pin them in place, and then I can remove them from my stuffed animal and sew them on. And you can do this whatever way you want to. For some reason, I always just do it by hand, but you can also use a sewing machine. And when I do sew it on by hand, I usually use a back stitch. And after that, your overalls are done. So I'm gonna try this on my stuffed animal again. And I struggled trying to put these on for so long before realizing I forgot to unbutton the straps in the front. So I made sure to do that. That makes it a lot easier. And I'm having my stuffed animal wear a crew neck under this, which looks very similar to a long sleeve. So I already made a video on how to make that. You can really put whatever you want under this, or you could have nothing at all for more of a summery look. I really hope you all enjoyed this video. Comment any video ideas you want to see next. And please like this video and subscribe to my channel if you want to see more. I'll see you next time. Bye!